Sky Sports F1 presenter Ted Kravitz has joined us in the studio. Good afternoon to you, Ted. Thanks Hello for there. coming in. <laughs> Such a sad day for Formula One, uh, of course, and we've seen so many tributes from across the F1 world and the sporting world mm. uh, as well. What are your memories of him? It is a sad day, you know, and somewhat of a surprise. I mean, we, you know, we knew Nicky was ill, he'd had a lung transplant over the winter, but we thought he was invincible. We thought it was only a matter of time before he'd be bounding back into the paddock and making jokes about his team not doing well enough. Of course, they've had five one two <laughs> success finishes so far this year, Mercedes. But, uh, you know, just, just so many stories. My thoughts about him, he was such an awesome driver. A champion many times over could have been more but going back to the film he was talking about the movie that that, that, that made his rivalry with James Hunt stretched it to a public audience you know a, a funny story he always felt that Daniel Brühl who played him in that in that movie wasn't good-looking enough you know we always said to him oh Nicky you know do you think he played you well he said oh he's not good-looking enough you know I was much better looking than that so he always had a smile on a joke. And he always said it as it was in his mind didn't yes, he as well exactly. uh, if we take you back to 1976 and the German Grand Prix and that horrendous crash and, and there's a severe burns he mm. suffered but somehow recovered and what six weeks later mm. was racing again quite remarkable in terms of sporting comebacks it's got to be one of the greatest isn't it it really has to be because the cars were so dangerous there. You know, at that time, the drivers were essentially sat in, in between gallons of petrol, in, in between fuel tanks. And any crash like that was instantly going to result in a fire. And, and, and he, was, he was injured so gravely from that and so close to death's door at that time in 1976 to come back from that. And not only, you know, just a matter of almost 50 days later, you know, challenge to win Grand Prix and challenge to win that year's title unbelievable you know but such is the mark of safety in formula one if a crash like that happened these days a driver would walk away you know but 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 louder it, to come through that was was truly awe-inspiring yeah and not just the safety aspect but the sport as a whole if you compare the 70s when Nicky Lauda started driving to now how much has it changed and how much was he influential in the way it's changed it's changed immeasurably, and, and, and Nicky was always a pioneer for safety, along with Sir Jackie Stewart and others, because he'd been there, he'd felt it, and he'd lost so many friends. And, you know, uh, people don't realise this about Nicky, uh, as well as his speed, he was so smart, he was so intelligent, he was so influential behind the scenes, you know, working with Bernie Eccleston, with everybody who took over with the FIA to try and improve driver safety. You know, he's, he's made... The fact that the drivers are so safe these uh, these days, that's largely been part of him, and what a legacy. And, of course, he won three world championships in total, but had it not been for that accident, mm. as well as he recovered from it, would he have won more? I think, undoubtedly, you know, he would have challenged for more championships. You know, he'll truly go down in the sport as one of the greats. You don't win three world championships without being one of the greats, and he could see greatness in others, and that's what I was interested the tributes of Lewis Hamilton earlier. You know, Lauda was instrumental in getting Lewis Hamilton to sign for Mercedes because he could see a little bit of him, a little bit of that killer instinct that Hamilton has. Lauda had as well, kept it under, under wraps a little bit. You know, James Hunt was the... Was the uh, guy who would go out and party and louder was the uh, was really the serious one but he had a, a real speed underneath so I think he could have won many more champions and just tell us a bit more about that relationship between him and Hamilton it, it was a bond that continued uh, and, until he passed away yeah and I, I know how Lewis and everybody at Mercedes as well as in the wider motorsport world and the wider world uh, of course will we'll, we'll be mourning Nicky's loss because Nicky could see a kindred spirit in Lewis Hamilton he could see somebody who was able to turn it on but also a thinker as well thought about his craft and how to get the best out of him himself his car and the team as well we'll never see Nicky's like again I tell you yeah Great. and one of the greats as you said let's just finish thinking ahead to this weekend it is the Monaco Grand Prix one of the highlights of any racing calendar but um it's gonna be an emotional weekend for, for everyone, isn't it? It will be, and uh, especially for you know, the teams that Nicky had an association with, with McLaren, with Ferrari. He was a great champion for both of those teams, and they'll be feeling his loss very keenly. But especially with Mercedes. You know, since his illnesses over the over the winter, Mercedes have been keeping in touch. Nicky's been on the phone to Toto Wolf, the team principal. He's been on the phone to Lewis Hamilton, to Valtteri Bottas, the racing drivers, congratulating them, but also picking up on things that they might have done better you know he was always a, a stickler for details so yeah the motor racing world will miss him dearly